Hello everyone, this is a step 6, step D video. We will discuss how can we set up the OPC UA server function in Siemens i7-1200 PLC. From the previous videos, we used the MATLAB to set up the script to transfer a process model from S domain to a Z domain. And then we use MATLAB Simulink set up a control loop. In this control loop, we have a process model. We already type in the Z domain process model. And also we have a disturbance input. We also have a scope. We have a simulated feedback that is a one delay uh, demonstrate one sensor feedback. And another key important that is a interpreted MATLAB function. So here we need to set up the OPC UA communication between the MATLAB and the PLC. Since the OPC UA, we need to set up the server and the client, and the MATLAB will run as an OPC UA client. PLC will run as an OPC UA server. So in this video, we will mainly discuss how can we enable and set up the OPC UA server function in Siemens i7-1200 PLC. All right, let's go to the TIA portal. This is the Siemens PLC programming software it named the TIA portal. The latest version that is a version 16. I highly recommend you are using the latest version because to enable the OPC UA server function, usually we need the latest firmware from the controller. For example, for this i7-1200 PLC, it need a version 4.4 firmware version. So the version 16 support that. For some old version, for example, version 14, maybe the TI portal no longer support this latest firmware. All right, let's go to the device configuration and double click this device configuration. We can go to the hardware configuration wheel and check out the current firmware and check out what the type, the CPU, what I'm using. Okay, the controller what I'm using, that is a Siemens Symmetic i7-1200-1215 controller. We need to configure and activate the OPC UA server function from this uh, controller. But keep in mind, for the i7-1200 PLC, only the firmware version 4.4 or greater than 4.4 support the OPC UA server function. So we must guarantee the controller firmware, what I'm using, the hardware firmware, and the software configuration firmware in your TI portal, they all must be greater than or equal to 4.4. So in my case, my hardware that is a 4.4, but we also need to check the TI portal configuration. So let's double click the properties of this CPU, check out the firmware configuration inside this project. Go to the general, you will find out the firmware is showing here. In this project, it shows the 4.3 firmware. For general programming, for example, for this 4.3 configuration, you can still download a higher version hardware. It doesn't matter, it can still work. But for enable some special features like this OPC UA server, we must match the configuration and the hardware. For example, my hardware that is a 4.4, but the configuration that is a 4.3. So I need to upgrade this 4.3 inside this project, upgrade to 4.4, okay? Let me show how can we replace that. Okay, we can right click and uh, click this uh, change device. Select the same type that is a CPU 1215 here. I'll find out this controller. Keep in mind, only 4.4 from the i7-1200 series controller is support OPC UA server. Keep in mind this. So we need to change to this uh, hardware configuration from 4.3 to 4.4. Click this uh, version 4.4, click the OK. You must guarantee your hardware configuration as well as your actual hardware that firmware must be version 4.4 or greater than version 4.4 okay so the TI portal what I'm using that is the version 16 okay okay let's check out the hardware configuration 
double click this uh, CPU and then you will find currently this firmware version that is a version 4.4 that is an offline configuration firmware okay so let's go to the OPC UE this option to enable the OPC UE server function let's go to the server here check this box activate OPC UE server current IP address of this controller that is 192.168.1.200 with this port so this is the full name of this OPC UE server okay we can leave this default value here and keep in mind this server license certificate that is this and we will check this non-security for testing wheel we will use this non-security and then let's go to the runtime license we need to use this uh, schematic uh, OPC UE i7-1200 basic license okay so this is the hardware configuration wise let's go to the programming side so let's create a one data block that data block will be used for the OPC UE interface exchange the data between the OPC UE server and the client okay add a new block date block here so firstly i will name a number for this opc ua interface let's name the 300 and we can call this a date block opc ua okay okay we set up this date block for opc ua let's double click this date block and from this uh, controller and the MATLAB, we need to exchange two data. One is uh, the PID control signal from the PID controller to the MATLAB symlink. Uh, one is a feedback signal. That feedback, that is a MATLAB symlink running results, and then transfer to the PID input. Let's create uh, two tags here. One tag, we call that OPC UA underscore PID control. One is a uh, OPC UA underscore PID PV process value. Okay, their type is a real float value. And to allow this uh, two tasks can be communicate through the OPC UA, firstly, we need to check out one properties from this uh, DB. Right click, go to the properties. And firstly, we need to double check if this uh, checked it. It block accessible from the OPC UA. By default, it will be checked it. Okay. And then let's check out the detail setting here. So you need to enlarge this column, check out accessible from the HMI OPC UA. These two settings here. So that is a read and write accessible setting here. That is a read and write uh, permission here. So basically, we will check all of them. OK, we create two tags under this uh, data block OPC UA. And then let's go to here, OPC UA communication. We need to use this uh, server interface. Let's double click, create a new server interface. And uh, I will rename that uh, as a server interface PID i7-1200 PID. Click this uh, server interface. We will create an interface. Click the OK. At the left side, that is the OPC UA server interface. This is the actual area to exchange the data between the server and the client. At the right side, that is our local PLC size. So we need to assign the tag from our PLC side to this uh, server interface. That's why we need to drag that two tag from this data block OPC UA, drag this uh, two tags and uh, drag to this uh, server interface. After we configure this uh, server interface, basically we finish everything about this uh, OPC UA setting. Okay, so we can save and uh, compile.
After this compile successfully, let's download this controller. Click the download. Because all those configuration need to be downloaded to the controller, activate that OPC UA function. Let's download this controller. So with this configuration, the OPC UA server function will be activated inside this controller. Start search. Make sure the IP address of this controller that is 1.200. Okay, I will download this uh, CPU. And since we need to download this hardware configuration, so the controller need to be stopped. All right, so with this selection start module, once we hit this finish, the controller will start. Okay, currently this uh, CPU is running. To verify this OPC UA function, uh, we can use the OPC UA client test software to test the communication between the OPC UA client and this uh, OPC UA server PLC. So we can use this uh, unified automation UA expert software. That is a uh, one free software. The current version what I'm using that is a uh, 1.5, and uh, we can use this uh, this software running as an OPC UA client. So we can use this uh, OPC client to test the communication between this uh, software and this uh, hardware. Okay, let's hit this uh, add a server. Okay, from this uh, custom discovery, let's double click. And let's type in the OPC UA server address 192.168.1.200.4840. So keep in mind, this address must be the same as the hardware configuration. If we recall, go from the device configuration. Double click the CPU. Go to the OPC UA setting. Make sure the OPC UA server address we type in that is the same as this one. Okay, the port number we are using that is 4840. Okay, this address. Let's hit the OK. And once we browse this uh, server, currently the client found this uh, server. Okay, so we will use non security for a test. Click this uh, accept and trust this uh, server certificate and click the continue. This uh, client already browsed this uh, OPC UA server. And if you remember, we just configured here the server interface and uh, our tag are under here. Let's browse this uh, tree. So server interface here. And it found the server interface underscore i7-1200 PID. It is here. So under this folder, we found this is a two tag we just created. So we drag this uh, two tag, drag here. And currently the value is equal to zero. And the quality now is showing good. That means the communication between this client and the server, they are successful. So let's test the data. From the PLC side, we can create a one watch table under the watch table, and uh, we can create a new watch table. Okay, and uh, let's open this uh, data block OPC UA. Flow it and uh, drag this uh, two tag into this uh, watch table. And then let's key this uh, monitor. And then the system will go online, monitor the actual value of these uh, two tags. Currently they are zero. Okay, from this client, let me type in the data. Let's set a 20. So the value sent to the PLC, the PLC received this value. And the PV, let's set a 20, 30. 
okay, we send here. And also we can write a value from the PLC side. For example, we write a 15. To write this value into this tag, we can click this button and it write a 15. And then let's go back to the OPC UV client. So we will see this tag, this 15 transfer to this client. So that means this OPC UV server function already built up successfully inside this controller. Currently, we haven't connected these two tags into our PID side. So once we build up the MATLAB Simulink connection, I will connect these two tags into the PID controller. And other than those, keep in mind, the tag here regarding those two tags, the actual OPC UE tags address, that is this, node ID. For the PID underscore control, that is NS equal to 4, I equal to 2. And for the PID underscore PV, that is NS equal to 4, I equal to 3. This node ID. Okay? So we can temporarily park here. All right? Currently, we set up the transfer function from the MATLAB side. And also, we set up the OPC UE server function from the PLC side. Next video, PID 16E, I will discuss how can we set up the OPC UE client function in MATLAB, allowing the MATLAB can communicate with the PLC by using the OPC UE. All right, see you in next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, Please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.